Tonight, come on you Reds, should new laws be introduced to ban attacks on people with ginger hair? This woman won compensation after she was bullied, but she says the pain goes on. I went and had it lightened, and I've had it straightened, and <laughs> just try to change my image, because I don't want anyone to say those things to me ever again. So, ought such personal attacks be against the law, not just to protect redheads, but to protect anyone suffering abuse because of their appearance. Hello, I'm Kirsty Young. Making jokes about someone's race or sexuality has long been considered unacceptable. Yet when it comes to hair colour, it seems any redhead is still considered fair game. But could there be a case for legal protection against such discrimination or similar taunting on the basis of someone's appearance? Well, Pfizer's Liptrot has been to speak to one victim who decided to stand up to the bullies. Sarah Priller had always been proud of her beautiful red curls until she was bullied about them at work. The comments about her hair weren't the only things that were said, but they were the ones that hurt the most. It started off with the colour of my hair. They asked me if it matched the rest of my body, which is not nice. Do you know what I mean? I'm not a woman at my age. You don't ask anybody that. And then they would sit down and laugh and say other things about me. Do you know what I mean? And it was just not nice. I mean, it was just intimidating. In the end, Sarah won almost £18,000 in compensation at an employment tribunal for unfair dismissal and sexual harassment. This is the first time she's been back to the cafe where she used to work. And although it's now under new ownership, the comments have had a lasting effect. I'm nervous. I'm really nervous standing here. Why? I just don't like it. And as for her hair, well, it's not quite the same colour it used to be. Yeah, I went and had it lightened. And I've had it straightened and <laughs> just tried to change my image because I don't want anyone to say those things to me ever again. She's not the only one to feel this way. About 9% of us in the UK are red-headed. That's almost five and a half million people. Despite that, gingerism, as the harassment of redheads is sometimes known, is still considered acceptable. Charlotte Rushton has been photographing redheads for her book, Ginger Snaps. She says that of the 300 people she snapped, only two haven't been bullied for their hair colour. I'm not rude to people who are fat or wear glasses or are bald. Why can't we um, start thinking about the fact that it's hurtful to comment on other people's the way they look? But despite the hurt it causes, legal experts believe gingerism is unlikely to be recognised in discrimination law alongside issues of racism or sexism. Tom Flanagan is an employment lawyer who also used to be a redhead. As a problem, um, it is an issue which could give rise to bullying and harassment. Uh, and to be frank, I'd say so could lots of other issues. Um, there's no such thing as a, um, a, a red discrimination act or a ginger discrimination act. In itself, there's nothing unlawful about even picking on someone because of their red hair. But it's the picking on that counts. Sarah at least took the bullies on and wants to encourage other people to do the same, whether they're being picked on for having red hair, being bald, fat, whatever. If there's anyone watching this now that's going through the same things that you went through, any kind of bullying, what would you say to them? Don't ever give up. Keep it going. You may get some stick from it, but keep going. That was Ruth Liptrot reporting there. What do you think? Should